Howdy, piggers. How are you all doing today? We got pigs in a pile. Don't get up for me. It's cold out here. Pigs always keep a lookout when they're sleeping. See, this guy's the lookout. He's coming to check me out. Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. It is a clear, sunny, very cold day today. It's about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think in Celsius, I don't know, I think I'd be wearing a bathing suit in that weather. Anyway, I got a lot of work to do with the animals today, and it's been a while. I've been busy with other things, clocks, tractors, snow. I thought I'd take you along today because I got a bunch of things to do to take care of them. We'll just open this up here. Oh, hi, Ezra. Chase Rusty back into the cattle pen. There he goes. He knows what to do by now. And the first thing I have to do is fill up the pig's water barrel. Get the hose out here. Well, you're a mess. Who left you that way? Must have been. Ooh, cool ball. Now I get to stand here while it fills and visit with the pigs who just ran away. It's a good time to look and see how everybody's doing. These pigs are growing like crazy. I think they're about three months old now and they're getting into their teenager phase where they sprout up real fast and then they start to fill out as they mature. You guys all ran away on me. I was talking about you. Come on back. I was being too loud, wasn't I? Farm life in cold weather is all about the details. For instance, I gotta make sure that this hose is completely empty before I store it or it'll freeze up and I won't be able to use it the next time. In addition, I should have paid attention to the detail of whether my gloves got wet or not because they got soaked and now my hands are cold. Luckily, I have a means of quickly drying my gloves in the workshop. And I have many, many pairs of dry gloves use throughout the day. My workshop is kind of a refuge throughout the day on cold days like this. When I get too cold I have the heat on in here and I do a little tinkering on something, warm back up and then head back out. Or you know I use the time to do a little reading as well. Alrighty next job. For this one I'll try not to get wet. I have to put some feed in the pig's feeder. Because as you can see they're out. You little oinkers. Oh, this is getting pretty empty. I need a refill this week. Got to make sure to get all the feed out before I draw it out to be refilled. We don't want any old feed left in there. This gravity wagon is going to be a bugger to get out through all this snow. I'm going to have to hook the 656 to it and yank it out. And then the auger truck comes from the feed mill and puts three tons of feed in it for me. Hey there, Fuzzy. Boy, you got a thick coat. In you go. All right, next job. Oh! These guys just like to run around, don't you guys? Now, yeah, what's that? This is for your home. When it's cold out, pigs will burrow in like this and make a little nest because the ground is warmer than the air. And I just give them something to feather their nest once in a while. This is hay, not straw. And the reason I use hay is because straw is kind of hard to come by and quite expensive around here. It's about six bucks a bale. Hay is much cheaper. I found it works just about as good and it gives something the pigs can nibble on as well. They'll dig right into this hay and fluff it up and bury themselves in it. Once they get tired of playing games with me. Somebody's always got to sniff the camera. Stop! Don't do that. The bigger they get, the bolder they are. These guys come right up to me. And it's not so much that I'm kneeling down, it's that I'm not moving. If I stand and don't move, they'll come up and nibble on my boots. 
It's when I'm moving around that they start running. You guys got to get busy feathering your nest and having a snack. <laughs> right? Yeah. Two questions that always come up. What's in your pig feed? Well, mostly it's corn and soybeans, sometimes oats, and then the feed mill adds goody good vitamins and minerals that the pigs need to grow healthy. The other question is, what breed are your pigs? Well, the answer in short is they're mutts. We started out with purebred Gloucester Old Spots and then bred in some Tamworth, some Berkshire and other things. They're mutts. All right, I got another cold job to do, which requires me to cross this mountain of snow. Well, let's see if we got flow here. I had to put a heat tape around this hydrant because something's wrong with the valve seal at the bottom of it, which is four foot under grade. It must be leaking a little bit, it freezes up. Not frozen today, that's good. Now I just gotta find the hose under all this snow. Where'd you go? Well, there you are. Aha, I don't wanna get my hands wet this time. We'll see if it's running. Yep, this tank's got a floating heater in it because the heifers don't drink it fast enough for it not to freeze over. And the ladies are looking at me from inside the barn. This is a common wintertime activity for me, standing at one water or another waiting for it to fill. And the efficiency folks say, oh, you need to put a hydrant there, but I kind of enjoy it. I get to stand and do nothing and actually watch the livestock. It's a good excuse to be out here. I don't know, I just like it. <laughs> Guess I'm just wired a little differently than those efficiency folks. Teach their own. Oh, that wind's picking up. Actually, efficiency is something I think about a whole lot. Because after all, efficiency is what mostly eliminated small farms like ours. I'm careful with the things that I make more efficient. Too often when it comes to efficiency, we throw the baby out with the bath water. It's a shame. Next thing. Hey guys, it is time to wean Brownie's piglets. All eight of them. You guys are goose. Running around. Right, Mom? <laughs> I love it when they spin around in circles. And John the boar here, howdy John, he needs to go in with Red, hey Red, for breeding. I know buddy, you're going to have some fun if you are. Alright old boy, now I got to open up Red's pen, well, frozen down there, we'll go that way. <laughs> and then I have to let them take their sweet time to go in that pen. Well, let me see if I can get the gate to open the other way. Oh, there John. John, he is a big guy. I don't normally do this, kneel down next to him, but I wanted to show you how big he is. He's about five. He's really getting up there. Whoops, better get this. One time I left the hoe hanging over here. I used this to grab the water dish. So I left it hanging over the edge of John's pen like this. I came back the next day and there was nothing left of the hoe except for the metal end. He ate the whole handle. Here he goes. We got one in. Let me see if I can give Red a little urge. Oh, she's eating. Come on, Red. Let's go in. Come on, lady. Come in. There you go. The lovebirds are together. Now we just let nature take its course. Looks like John's got a niche though. I am very late with breeding the pigs. Reds should have been bred probably three or four weeks ago. It's one of those things sometimes I don't stay on top of. So we're gonna have late summer piglets this year. Let's see, four months, it's February. 
That takes us to what? February, March, April. February, March. February, the beginning of May. So figure six weeks in here for the piglets. They'll be going out in mid-June. It's not too bad. You guys are going to get along just fine. Hmm, probably not. Next, we're going to let you out, Brownie. Escape those awful little piglets that have been bugging you night and day. Usually, Mom's perfectly happy to leave. There you go. You got to keep the piglets in there. Oh, she went right in there. Oh, close the gate. All right. And the little piglets are left by themselves. They're gonna have to wean off. The heat lamps in here have been off for about a week now and the babies lay next to mom to stay warm at night. So now that mom's gone for a little while, I'm gonna turn the heat lamp back on for that night to substitute for mom. I just gotta lower this one down. Look at you guys standing all in a row. Mom will be upset for a while, it's just a part of the process, but it only lasts about, I guess, a day. And her udders will fill up and she'll have to dry off, which means her body gradually reabsorbs the milk that's in her udders. We keep an eye on her to make sure nothing like mastitis happens or infection in the udder. We've never, ever had a problem with our pigs so far with that. All right, Brownie, I'm sorry. Yeah. See those big udders? And then the best thing to do is just to leave them alone to let them calm down, get settled in their new situations. I've got all kinds of things to do today, and the next one I've been putting off for a long time. I can't put it off any longer, though. I've been using this tractor, the 656, to load hay into the barn for the cattle. It's got the spear on it. And it's about time to put some chains on the tires. But first, I gotta go over here and dig them out. Ah, let's see, is it those? Or is it those? It's these. They've got the tensioners with them. I really haven't needed chains until now, but with that last snow, we're starting to get a packed layer of ice right on top of the ground, and they're gonna be needed to clean out the barn and move hay in. Boy, it's funny, just like anything farm related, people debate and debate the fine points of putting on tractor chains. How tight they should be, which way these little clips should face on the outside. You get people to say, do it one way, people to say, do it the other way. So I just do it my way. I realize they have to move the chains back here to back the tractor up. Isn't that the nature of life, you know? If you spend your whole life just listening to other people instead of what you think, you'll get spun. You'll get spun round and round and round. It's good to have your own bearings. All right, let's fire up this old girl and get her backed up. If you're curious about how I put on tractor chains, I found an easy way to do it and there's a whole video on it in the video library on the channel. I'll put a link to it up here.
Speaking of chains brings me to the reason I need chains. My dear Dexter cattle, which are sunning themselves today. They warm up a lot out in the sun, even on cold days. They are so fluffy with their winter coats. There's Rusty over there. He's doing fine. There's a little one we call Peanut, the last born this year. Hey, no funny business. This is old Carrie, one of our two cows with horns. And the reason that two of our cows have horns, Patty and Carrie, is because we bought them that way. You guys are very peaceful. Hey, Orden. Mr. Titus. I think that one of the important things about keeping cattle in the winter is their bedding pack, which I'm standing on. This bedding pack is now about, well, it's close to two feet tall. You can see how much it's built up out here. It's up to here, which is, you know, that far above the ground. One of the reasons we've been able to develop a bedding pack like this is the hay that we bought runs through a roto chopper on its way into the baling chamber on the round baler, and the cattle have more of a tendency to pull it into the pen. And it doesn't bother me that much because it creates a nice dry place for them to lay at night. And in addition, keeping a good bedding pack helps you compost what you've got in place. The manure mixed with the hay heats up and it provides both a beginning to that decomposition process and a place for the cows to lay down that's warm and dry. So I'm going to have to clean this out sooner or later. I don't think sooner, but that's one of the reasons I put the chains on the 656. I might as well give these guys some water while I'm out here. Fill up their trough. Seeing that hay in the water reminds me of an old story when my great 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 grandfather came on sleigh to settle where we live in the very early 1800s. The story went that he brought a young heifer calf with them and on the way he stayed at other folks house and uh, they would give the heifer hay tea and hay tea so I've read is uh, sweet clover hay that is has hot water poured over and it steeps in the hot water and it makes a nutritious tea and that's what the calf ate. Obviously he couldn't carry all the hay the calf would need with them in the winter time on a sleigh. What are you doing you crazy cat? Don't you know it's cold down there on the ground? No, he got wet. Didn't like that very much. The little pigs are making funny noises in here. Let's see what they're doing. You guys are just making funny noises. One time when we weaned piglets, we had a two by four rail on the side of the pen and Hillary came in here and they were all sucking on the rail. I guess they missed their mom, didn't you guys? They've been on dry feed for geez, three weeks now, so they'll have no trouble transitioning. Right, you little sausages? Oh, you fell over. Well, I got one more kind of animal to show you guys today. And that is the chickens. I don't cover the laying hens too much in winter because we don't really do a lot with them. Hillary collects the eggs and feeds them and waters them twice a day. When the snow's deep, they don't go outside much. They mostly hang out in here. And we're getting more and more eggs as the daylight increases. So everything's good with these ladies. They're just busy chickening all day. Well, that's it. We made it around to see and care for all the animals on the farm. They're all doing great. We're doing great. Everybody's fine here. I hope you're fine too. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.